Okay, let me come to the John Mahama story now, which is, uh, which is uh, the next story. So, the Ghana Bar Association is meeting at its annual conference in Ho in the Volta region. Uh, Ho is also the area of the Asogli state and uh, is controlled by the Agbogbo Memefia. His name is Togwe Afede, uh, about whom we will say a little later tonight. But the Ghana Bar Association are meeting there, isn't it? And um, the President Mahama had made comments earlier when he had met the NDC group of lawyers and he had been particularly critical of the judiciary. This story has gone around all over. And if you look at the media the coverage of the story and you look at the reactions that people are giving, uh, people are saying that President Mohammed's source, because the first, the first um, uh, query for President Mohammed's comments was that, what is he saying? What, is this? what has the judiciary done? He does, he's, not recite, he's not citing any particular case in which he felt that the ruling should have gone one way or the other. And then supporters of John Mohammed said that he's relying on the CDD's Afrobarometer report, which has indicated that there's not trust and confidence in the judiciary. But that CDD Afrobarometer report, uh, in terms of its reflections on the judiciary, has not dramatically changed over the last 20 years. Many times, Afrobarometer reports has occurred. They have always said, not just Afrobarometer, but other reports, police are corrupt, judiciary are corrupt. They've always said that. However, people think that President Mohammed's comment was based on the Afrobarometer report. Some people were also quite disappointed that in his expressions, President Mohammed did not say uh, what the judiciary had really done. They did not say, for instance, that the judiciary looked at a matter of this nature and they called it blue when it's obviously red. Everyone knows that it's red, but we respect what they say and we disagree with it. He didn't make any such comments. He just took an attack, a blind, anonymous attack on the judiciary. Anonymous because he did not lay his hands on anything. That's what President Mohammed's critics are saying. Let's have a listen to what President Mohammed actually said. And then we'll go to Ho uh, yesterday, Monday it was, yeah, yesterday, at the bar conference, and listen to what the Attorney General uh, had to say in response. And then we will uh, go back to election petition 2021 and show you something. This is John Dramani Mahama addressing the NDC faithful lawyers uh, somewhere in Ghana. Recently, so badly has the image of our judiciary deteriorated that many of our citizenry openly make mockery of our justice system and of our justices. The phrase, go to court, is these days met with derisive laughter instead of hope that one would truly get justice if he went to the courts. If people are not poking fun about politics and inducements being used to sway the hand of justice in the lower courts, then it is poking fun and making statements about the 7-0 of the unanimous FC. One of the scariest existential threats to any democracy is when citizens think their judiciary holds no value for them or no use to them. And this is the security threat that the national security apparatus tried to draw the attention of the nation to recently, but was poorly received by the president and his party. It is scary because it threatens the peace and stability of our democracy. And we must quickly correct this fast spreading notion. If care is not taken, we will get to a stage where people will have no qualms about taking the law into their own hands because they do not have the confidence that they can get any justice from the system. There is therefore the urgent need for the Ghanaian judiciary to work to win the trust and confidence of the citizenry and erase the widely held perception of hostility and political bias in legal proceedings at the highest courts of the land. Unfortunately, we have no hope that the current leadership of our judiciary can lead such a process of change. We can only hope that a new Chief Justice will lead a process to repair the broken image that our judiciary has acquired over the last few years. It is therefore worrying that there remains deep-seated perceptions that institutions like the General Legal Council exist to intimidate lawyers who are critics of this government and deprive, deprive qualified students from studying for professional law certificates. How? do you raise confident, independent, and creative lawyers with a focus on problem solving when during their training you tie their hands behind their back and suggest that they learn to accept oppressive rules without contest? In addition to this is the inexplicable ambivalence of the government and the government-controlled General Legal Council to meaningfully expand access to legal education. NBC stands by its promise 
ahead of the 2020 elections, that they will do all that is possible to expand access to professional legal education and ensure that all who are qualified and aspire to become members of the bar are able to do so. President Bahama ending that, that uh, uh, report on a note of committing the NDC's um, philosophy to expanding access to the judiciary. The question always comes, NDC was in power for eight years. Where is the report on expanding judiciary? This is, is always going to come. Nobody, we can't do anything about it. We have to ask that question. Because if a, 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 a former president and a former vice president says, I will do something, uh, which problem has been uh, with us for that long? Then he has to say that in 2009, the NDC put up this document to do so and so. In 2013, we expanded it. Um, if and when we win again in 24, 24, we'll do this. That's we can take. But just to say that the NDC, what has the NDC done when they were in power for eight years? They didn't, they didn't, know, they didn't, they didn't know that legal ed education needed expansion. We've been talking about this since 2001. So anyway, but that's how President Mahama ends. We'll deal with that later on. I mean, you can deal with that yourself. You can ask any of those people who know uh, for, uh, for a fact what the NDC did, you can send a text message to our portal, Good Evening Ghana Official, on Facebook. Now, the other thing President Mahama said is that a new Chief Justice, he said that as well. He said a new Chief Justice, they're hoping that, but we're not really sure the context within which he says that, whether he's talking about post-2024, if he's elected the new Chief, because the new Chief Justice is arriving before 2024's election. And the new Chief Justice will arrive through the hands of President Akufuado. He's going to do the nomination, because Chief Justice in Iyebo will attend 70 next year. So President Akufuado is going to appoint that new Chief Justice that President Mahama talks about. So I'm not, I'm not really sure whether in his presentation he was aware that this new Chief Justice he talks about, which is arriving next year, will arrive through the nomination of President Akufuado and through the uh, Parliament Appointment Committee. I'm not sure whether he, says, he knows that. Because President Mahama also says, what is quite worrying about what he says is that the current crop of leadership of the judiciary are not able, they don't have the capacity to uh, occasion the changes that he's asking for. But then, the other uh, issue that President Mahama talks about, he relies on Albert Kandapa, the, the, the Minister for National Security, doesn't he? Who said something recently about the judiciary, something like that, and he was criticized by his own people. President Mahama relies on that. Uh, the other worrying bit is this reference to uh, unanimous academy, which President Mahama himself said uh, was a reference in jest to the Supreme Court. I think that ordinary people like us can do that. But a former president cannot make reference to unanimous FC. FC standing for a football club. It's particularly derogatory to the another institution of state. And if you have been president before, you've taken the oath of president, you have appointed judges, you took the oath of president through the learned chief justice, you, you took the oath of vice president through the learned chief justice. So you have an acquaintance with the judiciary. More than anything else, a person of that caliber should not be making reference to a unanimous football club. You know, we, we do that, journalists, we, we bloggers, we do that, unanimous academy. But when it comes to that level, I believe that if we are want to build a country, we should not be talking like that when you are former president. You, you can criticize the judiciary. There's no question about that. You can say you disagree with it. We've had criticisms of the judiciary. We've had Rawlings make comments. We've had uh, Professor Mills make comments. Not these kinds of comments, but Professor Mills, for instance, will talk about the judiciary without any derogatory reference to the judiciary. He, he will express his disagreement. J.J. Rawlings. When the famous 31st December ruling came against him, he expressed profound disagreement, but never did he refer to the judiciary in a derogatory manner and say a unanimous FC. What is this unanimity that has become a big concern? And uh, the, at the bar conference, President Akufado spoke about it, but we'll not talk about President today. We'll come to what the Attorney General said. Now, the, uh, the election petition, and the Attorney General suspected that, and we know that since 1996 election, the losers of every election and, uh, in, since 1996 have congratulated the winner. In 1996, President um, um, uh, Kufo uh, congratulated President Rawlings for winning the 1996 election. In 2000, President Rawlings conceded defeat to President Kufo. In 2004, Professor Mills conceded defeat to President uh, Kufo. In 2008, Nanado Dankwa Kufuado conceded defeat to Professor Mills, of course, on a scale of 25,000 difference in the votes of 8, 8 million people who voted. Then in 2012, President Akufuado refused to accept the, the Electoral Commission's report. He went to the Supreme Court, and after a 5-4 verdict of the court, four of the judges believed that the, uh, the petition by the, the petitioner uh, had, had uh, merit 
and that certain things should occur, like rerun of the election in some parts of the country. Four of the judges felt so. Five of the judges felt that the President Mahama was validly elected. So President Mahama has survived an election petition in which he won by a verdict of 5-4. He received a concessionary phone call from the loser of the election petition, and indeed the election itself, uh, President Akufado, uh, telling him that, Mr. President, congratulations, now I've finished the court, it's a 5-4 verdict, I will not seek a review, you have won the election. And so in 2012, once again, historically, Ghana obtained a concession from the loser. And then came 2016, where President Mahama conceded. But in 2020, 2020 is the only election since 1996 that we have not had a concession from the loser. But what is the basis of not having a concession from the loser? Because the loser went to court on an election petition, and unlike the election petition that President Mahama won, this one was a defeat by a 7-0 unanimity of the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court, in giving its verdict, gave its reasons why they are saying that the, uh, the, the petitioner's claims falls flat. They, they offered their reasons. Justice Enia Boa, in his final conclusion, offered his reasons. Now, if you have heard what has happened in Kenya, and tonight, if we have time, we'll go to it. Raila Odinga has conceded after the Supreme Court's verdict. And if you look at how the Supreme Court in Kenya heavily relied on the reasoning in Ghana's 2021 election petition, you will understand that the quality of the reason in Ghana's election 2021 has become of global significance. Now, this is the reason that President Mahama is, 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 is calling to the, to the, to the bin. That's the, the reasons that the judiciary have given, which have become of global significance, now being cited in Kenya in their own election petition, which has now ended in Kenya, a peaceful transition between uh, Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto with Raila Odinga accepting the verdict of the court. That's the reason that President Mahama is, is not accepting. And, and uh, people believe that it's as a result of that that he makes comments about the judiciary in the manner that we have just played him say. And, um, and as former president, really, the, the, the NDC legal team should furnish him with certain, certain substantial things that occurred in the court that should let him be able to say that this 7-0 unanimous decision of the court, I disagree with. Anyway, let me refresh your minds with what the court said about President Mohammed's petition. Then we'll come back and go to Ho and hear what the Attorney General said. And then after that, you can uh, send us your messages on what you think about this matter. I think that in the interest of nation building, President Mahama should really come again. He should come again, first of all, on references like uh, unanimous FC. He himself said it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a reference in jest. It's derogatory to the judiciary. A former president should not join what we are doing. He should not. The former president is an elevated voice. A former president is a really elevated voice. It's an elevated personality. In giving a speech to NDC lawyers, this is unanimous FC. Unanimous football club. That, that's really, that's, that's really, really derogatory to the judiciary. And that, we can't build a nation like that. And we have had judiciary. Judiciary can make mistakes. And you'll see, see that in America, 50 years after the fact, the ruling in Roe and Wade has been changed by the American Supreme Court. So we have had judiciary make decisions and change it all the time. And we have had, even in recent times, the NDC winning certain decisions against the Attorney General. There's no doubt about that. And the record is there to show. So when a former president comes and he says, unanimous FC, which is the term that was given by rabble rousers during the election petition, he said, former president cannot speak like that. If we are building a democracy and our democracy is 32 years old, we need to build it. He cannot speak like that. Somebody lost a verdict 5-4. He said, I accept it. You lose a verdict 7-0. You said, I won't accept it. Here are the reasons Eni Yeboah gave for dismissing President Mohammed's application. We conclude this judgment by emphasizing that the petitioner did not demonstrate in any way how the alleged errors and unilateral corrections made by the first respondent affected the validity of the declaration made by the chairperson of the first respondent on the 9th December 2020, as already stated in this judgment. The petitioner has not produced any evidence to rebut the presumption created by the publication of CI 135, for which his action must fail. We have therefore no reason to order a rerun as prayed by the petitioner as in relief F. We are calling them dismiss the petition as having no merit. <laughs> so that was uh, Justice Eniebo, the Lord Chief Justice, uh, reading to dismiss the petition on a 7 uh, 0 unanimous decision of the Supreme Court. And uh, this has come, uh, this has become necessary to show you in the wake of. Uh, the comments that President Mahama made, which has now ruffled feathers. On Monday at the Bar Association, the Attorney General, leader of the Bar, addressing the Bar Conference, took opportunity to speak about President Mahama's comments. This is what Godfrey Dami said.
the president, the judiciary has shown consistently that it is the last line of defense for our country. It was thus with great dismay and embarrassment that I heard a person who has occupied the highest office of state, former President Joe Mahama, recently launched an oriented attack on the integrity of Ghana's judiciary. And I observed that this was really the latest installment of systematic and caustic attacks, attacks on our court by the former president, albeit unjustified. And I observed that this was really, and I'm compelled to comment on same in this address because they border on the security of the state and constitute a deliberate pattern of conduct aimed at undermining the independence of the judiciary, an arm of government whose autonomy is crucial to its proper functioning. Such conduct is clearly deplorable coming from one who has occupied the highest office of president and aspires again to that office. At this moment, it's important for all to note that I express this sentiment not because I stand in opposition to former President Obama as a politician. My dismay is founded more on the fact that I'm a lawyer and every lawyer ought to be concerned about these kinds of views expressed by a political leader in this country. It would be a sore omission if I fail to recognize that there have been other leaders of the political party to which the former president belongs. I do not recall either the late Jerry John Rollins or the late Professor John Evans Atamios mount such a systematic and deliberate campaign of hate against the judiciary. In fact, never once did Professor Mills, Mr. Mohammed's former boss, launch any attack at all on the judiciary. Closely examined, one would notice that the source of the former president's unjustified attacks on the judiciary is the unanimous dismissal by the Supreme Court of his rather poor legislation petition, which indeed, in my respectful view, was dead on arrival and bound to be dismissed by any court where it is sought in the country. One cannot fail to note that his petition before the court in 2021 was a bundle of incompetent claims devoid of any substance. As stated already, the allegations of wrong allegation, wrong aggregation of votes, and vote pardon, which he put before the court, collectively involved only 6,622 votes, a figure which could not in any way affect the outcome of the presidential election. It is therefore perplexing how, if such a petition is dismissed by the court, it should form the basis for an allegation of unfair treatment by the court. It ought to be understood that it is the duty of the court to administer justice according to law. The court is not a mercy chamber to serve justice based on sympathy or affection. I observed with even greater worry that the former president, who is a non-lawyer, who is a non-lawyer, made this comment at a meeting on the legal committee of his political party. None of the lawyers raised a finger to contest the wrong and dangerous propaganda by the former president. By their silence, they became abettors of the propagation of hate against the judiciary. Well, the Attorney General calls it hate against the judiciary. We think that it's derogatory to the judiciary. So that's, a, that's our take on what President Mahama had to say.